Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring. Letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really Happy man. Ooh, another nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day. Wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. Dreadful weather. Just look at these letters. Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs. Goggins. The post will get through. Oh. It stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. What a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Frog? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's our flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's faring up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. It's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat.
Whoops. Hey, watch it. Cheerio. Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Bart. Come and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. <laughs> Bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. Oh, ta. Bye. Reverend Timms was having trouble with the rain, too. said the Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Look out. I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Walden was just along the road. Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, oh, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed.
and got stuck. It's no good, said Al. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I know, he said. We can put a message on my plane and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S-O-S. That'll do it. He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter. It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message? Mind your back! Oh, oh. Thanks, Peter. Right! Pat waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room. Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I finish this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> or you might have to swim home. Swim, said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again but there was a warm fireside to look forward to <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Cat. Early in the morning, 
Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. What lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer, lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one too. Plenty of post for the visitors. The Jacksons are staying up at Burkhow Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southlands Farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. <laughs> have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. letters all along the valley. At Burkhow Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. What a mess, said Peter. 
I don't know what Mr. Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio. The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. She'd just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't worry, I can. And off she went for the tractor.
Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride, and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. Oh, heck. Oh. Oh, hey up. Careful. Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped, but when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, the egg will do nicely for my tea. Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. 
It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way. Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? Said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards. Goodbye. Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. No, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. 
Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter. Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. <laughs> Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. Morning! Post! Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my hearing aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. Cheers. She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye. <laughs> At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they're champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam.
Lucy was on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. Pat had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each, and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye. The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg, laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat, how did they find all that out? Keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now. It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind, we'll have a little party tonight. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It had been wild and windy in Greendale. A lot of branches had fallen from the trees. Some had broken the telephone wires. Dear me, said Pat. That's a nuisance. There'll be a fair number of telephones out of action now. Oh, 
I wonder if the Reverend Tim's kept that stamp for me. Better pop in and see him. I hope he remembered. Hello, Reverend. I just popped in to see if you kept that Australian stamp yesterday. Of course, Pat. Just the thing for your collection. Waste not, want not. Thanks. But where are you off to, Reverend? London, to meet my sister Elsie. She's flying over from Australia. Haven't seen her for years. Here's that stamp. Thanks. Such a nuisance. I'll have to visit everyone to cancel church meetings while I'm away. Such a bother. With a train to catch, too. If only the phone was working. It's this wind we've been having. It's brought the wires down. Well, I'll just have to hurry. The train goes in an hour. Hope you get round in time, Reverend. Cheerio. Have a good trip. called at the post office for the letters. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. I'm not late, am I? Not really, but I thought you might have trouble getting through, what with all these trees blown down. Pat told Mrs. Goggins all about the Reverend Tim's letter, his trip to London, and his telephone being out of action. E, it's a bad job, isn't it? My phone's working anyway, said Mrs. Goggins. Hello, Greendale Post Office here. Who is it? Elsie Timms. Urgent message for the Reverend Timms. Flight diverted to Manchester. You'll come on to Greendale by car. Yes, I'll ask our postman to dash over and tell the Reverend not to go to London after all. I've got the message. Tell her I'm on my way. Bye, Pat. I hope you're in time. Bye. Hold tight, Jess. You're going to see some pretty hot driving now. Look out, Ted! Looks as though the Reverend's gone. I'll leave a note in case he calls back before he goes to the station. I might even catch up with him at Miss Hubbard's. Jess, we can take a shortcut along the back roads. It was a bit rough. 
Oh, no! Now, who's left that there? We'll never get past it. There's only one thing for it now. Come on, Jess. We'll have to walk it. Hello, Pat. What's all the hurry? Morning, Miss Hubbard. I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Have you seen him? Oh, he went a few moments ago. He's in a hurry, too. He wants to catch the London train. Oh, no! He mustn't go to London. I've got an urgent message for him. He did say he had to call at Ted Glenn's first. You might catch him there. You can borrow my bicycle. Go on. Thanks, Miss Hubbard. I'll try anything once. Come on, Jess. Hold tight. Oh, dear. I couldn't do this every day. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh, this is hard work. Whoa. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? You all right? I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Oh, you're too late. The Reverend's gone. Uh, but he said he'd call on Granny Dryden before he catches his train. Oh, no. Just look at that front wheel. It looks very peculiar. Leave it to me. I'll fettle it. You can borrow these roller skates. I've just mended them. You'll fairly move when you've got these on. Well, I said I'd try anything, and I must catch the Reverend before he catches his train. Thanks, Ted. Here we go again. Oh, oops! You're doing fine, Pat. It's not so good uphill. How do you stop? Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Meanwhile, Sam was taking the Reverend to the train. I thought I saw Pat dive over that gate, said Sam. Hello, Sam. Ah, Reverend. Thank goodness you haven't gone to London. Pat told the Reverend all about his sister's phone message, saying she was coming straight to Greendale. Lord bless us, what a good thing you caught me in time. There's no need to go to London now. Thank you, Pat. Here comes Peter Fogg, said Sam. We'd better get out of the way. Goodbye. Peter was following Sam's van along the road. Hello, Pat. Sorry I blocked the road with me trailer. I'll give you a ride back to your van. Thanks, Pete. I couldn't walk it. Here's the little story of a very special cat who's the friend and good companion of a certain postman.
traveling through the country with his good friend by his side. Pat knows his cat just likes to be there, for he always likes to ride through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside. As he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat, and it's always been like that, and it's always been like that, always been like that, always been like that, ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten, ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten. All the folks in Greendale like to wave and stop to chat, for they all like to see Pat as he goes by with his cat through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside as he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat and it's always been like that and it's always been like that. All right, but... Yes, thanks, Pete. Cheerio. Now, where did I put my pen? I must have left it at the vicarage. The Reverend Timms was carrying his sister's luggage into the house. I made it. Thanks to you, Pat, I got back just before my sister arrived. Oh, and I found your pen on my doorstep. Thanks, Reverend. I hope your sister enjoys her visit. Bye, Pat. Goodbye, Jess. Black and white cat. 